we're going live. Okay, this is my take on spiritual bypass. Um, and these are just my views, take what you want, uh, leave the rest. Okay, uh, there was a question and also it was about going into sublime spiritual experiences and then coming out of those states. And if you're in those spiritual states, are you spiritually bypassing uh, in those states? That's how I understood the question. Um, first of all, um, you know, the way I sort of hear people say spiritual bypass is, you know, people who are sort of saying, like, you need to live in the world. You can't just, like, suddenly go off into a bliss ecstasy state and sit on a rock. And, and not sort of be in the world and transcend the world and have all the lessons and be functional in the world. That can be one thing or, but I don't think that was the frame in which the question was, was sort of said. For me, you know, it, a lot of things, I mean, if people, are, if, if people have read like Power versus Force or any of Hawkins' work or the levels of consciousness, each individual, uh, each individual is either, is, is at, a, at a level of consciousness. You know, someone may be below 200, below integrity. I was below integrity. I was an addict. I was a food addict, uh, which is probably, uh, a, a, which is a low level the calibration of desire. So I was, I was very selfish. Um, you can have uh, in, a level of integrity. Uh, you can perceive yourself to intellectual knowledge and, and knowing a lot of information. That's the 400s. Uh, you can also... Um, set a spiritual intention for unconditional love uh, to, to love uh, to love and hold no resentment in every single moment no matter what or you can have an, an intention for enlightenment enlightenment or the non-dual place uh, total transcendence of the ego so first of all uh, and you know people may be conscious of their intention or may not be conscious also people can set a spiritual intention now when, when people say the word spiritual bypass to me I mean if someone um, if someone's intention in life is to be very functional and to show the world that they're very very functional and to achieve success in accordance with what is generally in the collective term success um, that can be an intention, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Of course, that person may sort of see a person who's sort of blissed out, uh, walking around uh, with all kinds of miracles happening about them and saying that they're wrong, you know, that that's wrong. I mean, you should have a job, a nine to five job. You should be, uh, you should be productively having an output at the end of the year and you should have sh uh, shown, you know, your level of productivity and so they won't be able to relate to that. And so they might say that, oh, you're spiritually bypassing. You're spiritually bypassing. So that, I, I, would, I, would, uh, I would disagree with that. Um, and, uh, but also everyone must be true to their own intention. You know, if someone wants to be like very, have a very functional career, a very intelligent career, earn lots of money, do lots of good things as they perceive what is good in the world, then that's fine. But to say that someone who's uh, sitting under a tree in a state of enlightenment is less, it, it, that they're wrong or they've spiritually bypassed their life, for me, uh, would be a judgment in, in my view. Because that level of consciousness for mm. me, someone at the level of enlightenment just sitting under a tree is doing more for the world than many people who are just running around like headless chickens, mm. seemingly doing hundreds of jobs every day. Day, look, you know, I, I swept the streets, I ticked 300 tick boxes, and I earned 3,000 pounds today, and got a, got a prize, and you've been sitting under a tree the whole day. So, so you say, you're spiritually bypassing and uh, your life, and I'm doing lots of stuff and being a good person. I think that the thing with that, so I don't, yeah, everyone to their own, I'm not judging any level of consciousness as being wrong or right, and everyone's free to choose whatever level of consciousness, but... I think the great thing with... Uh, now, there's another frame which I got from the question, which is lots of people, especially people who are spiritually orientated, uh, will often go into sublime, unexpected, profound spiritual experiences, which may last a short time or long periods of time. Uh, so people may suddenly, spontaneously, or after going to a spiritual retreat or meeting a spiritual teacher, can happen seemingly after an event, or a spiritual teacher, or, or, or such, or it may happen just randomly. In the middle of nowhere, you suddenly go into a state of bliss, 
uh, which may last a short time or even long periods of time. Uh, all kinds of things can happen. I'd say that karmically that person was due that experience. How they contextualize the experience depends on various factors. You know, if they've had a spiritual, if they're in a part of a spiritual community, they can contextualize uh, the spiritual experience uh, well. But the thing, the thing with, um, okay, the theme is on spiritual bypass. Look, if you, if you suddenly have amazing spiritual experiences, or you're doing spiritual work and you go into them, most people will bemoan coming out of those spiritual experiences. I think it's, it's incorrect to say that you've spiritually bypassed. It's the best way to see it is that you have good karma and suddenly your good karma hits you. Mm -hmm. So like you've had a past life and you were a Buddhist monk under a, under a tree for like 10 years, oming away, and then you <laughs> died miserable, miserably. And then suddenly in this lifetime, you're like a, you're like a, a road sweeper and then you go into a state of like incredible bliss and enlightenment and oneness and you know everything is magical and the world flows by and lots of miracles happen and you just don't know why that happened but then suddenly something takes you out of that state and then you're back into your ego you're back about worried about being about your, your bills uh, you're worried about you're not achieving enough and doing enough with your life and you lose that state of grace that's not a spiritual bypass that would I would say like I've had I was working in the stock market and I was in my ego, uh, you know, in three addictions, you know, uh, sort of uh, uh, food addiction, uh, workaholism, and another addiction. <laughs> Shall not be named, but. And, um, and, um, and, and suddenly, you know, I was facing death and kidney failure and I had a spiritual, a near death spiritual experience. I wasn't spiritual. I wasn't spiritual at the time, and I wouldn't call that a spiritual bypass, uh, but, uh, but it was transformative. Some other people may go into a state of spiritual bliss, but I'd say when you have these sudden spiritual experiences and you go into these places, I mean, that's good karma. But it doesn't mean um, that you've transcended all aspects of your ego. So if you suddenly, like, let's say, to be at a lower level of consciousness, it means you're identifying with your ego in the world. It means you're hooking into your thoughts and into the world from the level of your ego. So if you suddenly get blown into a high spiritual state, it means all those hit hooks are temporarily uh, nullified. So you suddenly go, because there's, the ego is not tracking. The ego is not tracking your thoughts. The ego is not tracking your body. The ego, ego is not tracking time, is not tracking the world. So suddenly you're in an elevated state. Um, that can happen for various reasons, but you're no longer tracking. But if there is any sort of, but you know, you, you only stay in an enlightened state, a non-dual state, um, if uh, you know, if you're at a level where you've transcended your ego, you remain in there. However, if you suddenly go into a state of grace, and then you're in that state of grace, and it's like, you know, miracle after miracle, you know, it's like money's been given to you, free food's been given to you, accommodation's being offered to you, uh, everyone loves you, and then suddenly something happens because you've not transcended an, an aspect which you can't feel at the moment of your ego, suddenly happens within your ego or seemingly in the world, mm -hmm. like uh, you're in a park and you're in bliss, but suddenly this thing happens, like a thought emerges in consciousness, which hasn't been transcended, or suddenly you see your boss walk across the park and you haven't transcended your boss, mm. then suddenly it's like at that moment, even though you're in a state of enlightenment and bliss, uh, suddenly it's like, oh, you're back in your ego, you're back in your body, you're backtracking time, you're worried about the bills, and, uh, and it seems like a sudden drop. And that's not, because, that's not a spiritual bypass. This means you got to experience, and for a period of time you're experiencing what it's like to have no ego. Mm. But then the world, I mean, this world is, I mean, as Hawkins said, it's purgatory. It means it, it's like a school where if you seek enlightenment, you know, the world will eventually bring up, if there's nothing, if there's something unresolved within your ego, even if you go into these non-dual, timeless, timeless spaces, mm. if there's anything unresolved, at some point the world will bring it up. Yes. You know, so at some point, you know, you see your boss, at some point um, suddenly you go, you go indoors and you suddenly see a brown envelope and it says like rent arrears or whatever it is. And then suddenly that's, it's, and that's because we know from the Course in Miracles, one of the first lessons is 
all my thoughts are meaningless. And also look around the room and everything you see in this room is equally meaningless. So if, you, if everything, you say, so if the ego is not there in this moment and every single thought that's arising is meaningless and every single object that's here is meaningless, that's in this room, then you will remain in an enlightened state. However, if anything, if in the world will, you, will bring it, you know, you can't be, in, to be enlightened means you've transcended everything. So, but if you've got, if you, if you catapult it into these seemingly temporary enlightened states, and you're not, you haven't transcended everything in your ego, then the world will test you. That's the job of the world. I mean, this is not, this is not heaven. This world is for testing anyone who wants enlightenment. If you, if you choose unconditional love, the unlovable will come your way. If you choose enlightenment, that which will tempt your ego will come your way. So something comes and then you drop. That's not a spiritual bypass. It just means um, there's more to do. And, it, and if, you're in a, if you're in an enlightened state, that thing that comes up then becomes the thing that needs to be worked on too. You hook back in. Now you have to, you have to make that hook meaningless, essentially. You, you, you say it's meaningless with the Course in Miracles, you put it into God's infinite light and love, you go to what's obser what observed that hook? You know, what observed that hook? Is the observer of the hook um, uh, susceptible to that hook? The observer is not. And if you keep going to the observer of that which got hooked in, that will eventually vanish and become meaningless. So when you transcend something, so for me, those who seek enlightenment are seeking to transcend the world. So every time your ego gets hooked in, then that has to be that has to be resolved to to a state of meaninglessness, or in in twelve steps we call it neutrality. So then your ego no longer re, can rehook, so you can maintain that state. So that's not bypassing. That's like if you pursue enlightenment, you go like, I want to be in, totally free in every single moment. And so everything. And if you are in that non-dual enlightened state, the timeless now then if something takes you out of that, that's the thing you have to work on next and get out. Now, if uh, there's more to it, but everything we do in there is that. Um, so, uh, the other thing I'll end on, uh, just because this spiritual bypass, is like people judge people who are in states of bliss and everything is flowing with them and miraculous and say, look, you haven't got a nine-to-five job, uh, you're not productive. Your, your parents may judge you as well if you're like blissed out and so. Yep. Well, what, what I also want to add to that, because as I, I was thinking about this as you were speaking, it's like the people who are. I mean, obviously, I, I don't want to generalise too much, but the people who may use a term such as spiritual bypass, it seems to be reflecting of that human condition where nobody likes to see anybody get something for nothing. So it's like that's why people who. I don't know, people don't like to see people doing well, like they win the lottery or, they, or they've got a successful benefits claim or anything like this because, oh no, why are they getting this and not me? There's this, and look, so you might see somebody who's really blissed out and spiritually and you're like, what do you mean you didn't do anything? What do you mean you just meditated? I've been working the steps for years and I've been in trauma therapy for my whole life and, and you're spiritual and like, why haven't I got that yet? And it, there is this, so you must be bypassing, you must be cutting corners. And I think that is the way I see it, that it's often used as a derogatory mm. or dismissive way based on potentially from people... And I, I've got to be very careful with the words that I'm using, but potentially people who haven't actually experienced that state coming to them so easily and readily because they haven't got out of their own way, perhaps. I, I totally agree. I mean, I totally agree. I, 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 and that's how I perceive it. People judge people. Mm. And, uh, and, you know, I come from a... I mean, I'm part of the collective like we all are. So it's like, you know, how productive have you been? What's, what, uh, yeah. what job title have you got? And um, so, and, and I do believe what you've said. I do agree. There is a jealousy and there is a kind of like, you know, for people where the miraculous is happening and everything seems to be going their way, um, there is a kind of a jealousy. And so, well, you're just spiritually bypassing, you know, you're just uh, like everything, you know, you just like, everything seems to slot into place for you. But, you know, I've worked so hard and I earned my, I've earned my struggle kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, and so, <laughs> so, I've allowed myself to cross. <laughs> so, you know, so you're wrong and you're spiritually bypassing. It's, it's 
but you know the thing so I to totally agree and um, I think that's where Hawkins work I often talk about Dr. Hugh Len who cleared out a whole prison for people without even meeting them just by transcending the data in his ego now you know, many people would say, well, you're just in, a, in your room forgiving people. Uh, you know, you haven't done anything, you're not being productive with your life, and go get a job. But uh, that, that's totally missing the context of what being in those states does for the world. I'd say it's more powerful. Even seemingly a person sitting under a tree at the state of enlightenment is more mm -hmm. powerful than someone saying you're spiritually by. And I'm sure, like, it, if Buddha wasn't famous, uh, you know, and people would just say you're spiritually bypassing your life. You know, go get, you know, go be more productive and do do more <laughs> yeah. stuff. Don't just sit there being blissed out for the rest of your life. So, yeah. You're just an entitled prince, just taking it easy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that would be the thing. <laughs>